I can drive into a town, not so much anymore because so many towns now don't have a hometown bank or a branch out of some place, but typically I can drive into a small town and just by the looks of the town I can tell you how good the banky, uh, bankers are in that town. And um, because they're involved, they, they, they're, they're willing to take risks, they're, they're willing to uh, make contributions uh, to support libraries and parks and, and whatever it takes. So um, yeah, I guess that would... A good business person can run any business. You know, I've, um, I've seen car dealers that have bought banks and turned them around uh, that were having troubles. Um, it, it, it's not very difficult. You got to control your costs. You got to know what your margins are, and you got to treat your people right. Mm -hmm. So there, there have been there's so many good business people and professionals, and that have started businesses and um, successful businesses. And I, I think what, one thing that has helped me here at Oak Bank is that when you have to start your own business, whatever it is, because so many that you realize that it takes more than just showing up for work every day. And, and most people work for organizations, they have no idea of how it started or what it took to start the bank. And one of the things we do here, I know I'm getting a little off track, but um, all of our new associates always get to spend about an hour with me just talking about the history of the bank mm -hmm. and what it took mm -hmm. and uh, who were involved and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but there's just so many I, I think of, uh, you know, and, uh, Dane County is just blessed with a lot of good business people and professionals and, mm -hmm. yeah. The fact that we have one location it makes a difference. You know, communication is always a problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. and. Uh, you, you can survey um, the associates or employees, whatever you want to call them, and communications is never as good as you'd like it. And even with everyone being in this building, the communications is still a challenge, but it's much, much better than it is in organizations that have, you know, 30 branches around or whatever the case is. So. Uh, but the people here is what makes the bank what it is. And it's clearly, we don't have anything that any other uh, financial institution uh, offers. Um, it's just, uh, the, what, what I hear all the time from people, from uh, clients of the bank, is it's not about, oh, how good that checking account is, or how good that savings account is, da da da. It's about the, the people they relate to here, and. Uh, you know, they just, yeah, happy. I mean, it, once we get someone in the door, we got them. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I really didn't make the decision to do banking. If, so, if someone would have asked me and when I was in college to write down on a legal pad maybe the 20 or 30 occupations I'd end up in, banking wouldn't have been on the list. Mm. Um, and the way I got into it was a part time while I was going to college. The uh, uh, professor in one of the classes announced that there were a couple part-time openings at businesses in Marquette, Michigan, which is home of Northern Michigan, where I was going to school. Mm -hmm. And uh, one was uh, a part-time accountant at a local uh, bread manufacturer. I mean, and the other was part-time at the bank, one of the banks. There's only two banks in Marquette at that time. Mm -hmm. So I, I preferred the accounting job, you know, to be a, an accountant at the bakery rather than a, a banker, you know, baker or banker. <laughs> and, uh, but the hours were like 11 at night until 6 in the morning when all the trucks and stuff were being prepared to go out the next day. And my wife at that time was a registered nurse and we had a child and going to school. I had to kind of watch what hours I worked, so I interviewed for the banking job. Interviewed in February, didn't get a call till April, so I figured they're probably looking for someone else. But 
and you got I, the job. I got the job, and that's how I ended up in banking. I really always said I'd never start a bank, and I was familiar with a few banks that had started up. And uh, I, I just couldn't imagine going out and finding the capital and everything. So <clears throat> after I left what I thought I was going to leave banking and go into another area of financial services, um, there was an announcement, you know, a press release in the paper, and I got a phone call from some people that wanted to start a bank in Fitchburg. Mm -hmm. And I kept putting them off, and finally I uh, traveled around to two or three banks in the state that had started up in the, that time, and I got kind of enthused about their success. Mm -hmm. So that decision I made was based on that primarily. Yeah. One thing I realized when I came here was that I had been working primarily for a check for a long time, mm -hmm. and when I, this experience has been completely different in that it's just enjoyable. Mm -hmm. and, and not that I haven't always helped, liked helping people, um, you know, start businesses or buy a home or buy a car or whatever, student loans, whatever the case is, but this has truly been a uh, joy. So. Yeah. My boss there became my mentor in banking, and even today I, I got a lot of his traits that drive other people nuts. But um, uh, he was, and, uh, and then when I graduated I, uh, um, uh, from school, uh, university, um, the, the economy was pretty strong. Vietnam was going pretty heavy. I was a veteran, had my discharge, had good grades. Um, uh, so, I was offered a job with a utility company in the state of Michigan that offered me $600 a month as opposed to the 400 a month the bank wanted to start me at. Mm -hmm. Well, 200 a month is a lot of money. Yeah. So, um, anyway, the bank then matched the 600 So that was a milestone, the fact that I did stay at that time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the other one was the decision to start this bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I've always been kind of admired uh, Vince Lombardi a little bit, and you know they have what they call Vince Lombardi time. And if you weren't ten minutes early, you were late. Mm -hmm. And and uh, those that are board meetings and that I we have twice a month start at eight o'clock, and they do start at eight o'clock, and every one of the board members know that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know that's one thing about being prompt, being on time, being early if you can. Uh, follow up. I, I've seen so many uh, salespeople that have a great gift of gab, if you will, mm -hmm. but the biggest mistake they make is they don't follow up. Yeah. And sometimes it takes a lot of follow up because you know, we've, we've learned in this business it takes about seven contacts before you get a, um, a positive response. Mm -hmm. So th that would be one. Uh, never quit learning. Wow. Uh, that, that is so important to keep reading um, and uh, stay involved in the community and, uh, you know, make yourself valuable to the community if you can. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's lots of lessons, but those are some of the key ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hold it. When, when you're representing shareholders, your primary obligation is to those shareholders, although it's not so much that as it used to be. Today you really got three constituencies. You got your shareholders, you got your staff, and you got your community to consider on any merger or acquisition uh, situation. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think uh, you know, I know of a small town down here where their bank uh, has an offer that they were thinking about, and it, it, they, they decided not to do it, even though it would have been very beneficial to the shareholders because they were worried about what would happen to, the, to that community. Because there's no doubt about it, they can say all they want, uh, but once you only got a branch bank, it's different than when all those people 
are involved and live in that community. Mm -hmm. And I, I still like to use the example of Oscar Mayer. When Oscar Mayer got bought out by Kraft, was it, I think? Mm -hmm. um, you know, they said, well, don't worry, we're still going to be involved in the community because nothing happened in Madison that Oscar Mayer executives and personnel weren't involved in, whether it was a fundraiser or whatever. And if you needed money, I mean, you, they, they were big. Well, pretty soon it was White Plains, New York, where you had to make your applications to. And pretty soon you didn't have the United Way involvement of their leadership and so forth. So. You know, there's always that, well, things aren't going to change, we're going to keep the same people, and da 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 but it happens. Mm -hmm. and, the, and we we are a board, and we're committed. It's not to say, I mean, if someone comes along, make, you know, and and you can't, you know, it's a deal you can't refuse, offer you can't refuse. For the shareholders, you got to consider it. But you do have to weigh those, what, what is the impact on the community and what's the impact on the people that work here. So, you know, Dane County is, and, and Wisconsin for that matter, but Dane County is is just special. And Fitchburg's kind of extra special because, you know, all the all suburbs, Wanakee, Middleton, Oregon, Vermont, they always got their pluses. But Fitchburg's got, I think, the biggest access location, you know, that's big. Um, and if you like the outdoors, I mean, I happen to do a lot of biking. Uh, Pedaling, non-electric bike, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot wow. of people think I should get one. But anyway, <laughs> um, and uh, you know, you're five minutes, you're on a bike path, or you're out in the country someplace, and uh, it's it's just uh, you know, it's got everything, and, and being convenient to Madison is is cool. You know, this athletic scene and uh, cultural and all that stuff, and eating places, mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, that that's uh, it, it's 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 just really a unique community. It's got its challenges and going to continue to have its challenges, um, and you, you know you, you got to remember Fitchburg is an ag community initially, and there's still a little element of that ag versus growth challenge that's going on, and uh, it's, hopefully Fitchburg's leadership will continue to balance those two challenges.